got to ask you all a question. How do you live your life? I mean, do you live your life more like you're following a set of directions? Or do you live your life more like you're kind of following a recipe? I mean, if you're following directions, you know, I mean, you're going in this direction, and it's, and it's much more, at least when I was younger, it was much more, well, did I get it right or did I get it wrong? But if you're following a recipe, you're coming out to where you're listening to what goes on, but it's much greater than that. Y'all have been to a chili cook-off, haven't you? Mm -hmm. It's all chili, but it all tastes a little bit different. You see, we as human beings, I think, sometimes, you know, think, well, we got to get it right. We've got to go follow this, so we follow these directions. But I wonder sometimes if we're sort of too set on the direction and not more set on the recipe. You know, I thought about that when I read the gospel for today. I, I love this gospel. I've always loved this gospel. And you get it every, pretty much every year on the last... Sunday of Epiphany, which, by the way, next week we start Advent. But it's a story of Jesus saying, when the Son of Man comes and sits on his glorious throne, he'll separate the, you know, the peoples, like sheep and goats. And he'll say to the sheep, come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was sick and in prison, you came and visited me. You know, when I was naked, you clothed me. I always love that part because it, to tell you the truth, what does he say? He, he doesn't say anything about, well, you followed the Ten Commandments and you didn't get anything wrong. <laughs> what he said was, no, you came and you did the outcome of what following the Ten Commandments should make you do. You really turned into what I wanted you to turn into. You didn't just follow the directions. You got the recipe. And he always says that, and it's so interesting to me because, you know, if you go through it, you gave me some, you know, when, you, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was sick and in prison, he doesn't say, well, when you were sick, you came and you healed me. He gives you things that are manageable. I mean, do you ever think, you know, life is that manageable? I don't know about lately. For me, nothing seems to be easy, and a lot of things don't seem to be manageable. But what Jesus is saying right here in this story is that it's all manageable. But the interesting thing is when he gets done, he says to him, Come, O blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And then he turns to the goats and he says, You know what? Depart from me, basically. You know, get away from me because, you know, when I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. When I was sick and in prison, why well, you didn't come and visit me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. You didn't give me anything. And they said, when didn't we do it? Isn't it funny that, that both, both the righteous and the unrighteous don't ever know when they did it for Jesus? Neither of them know. Neither of them know. And, and, and it, it says real clearly, you know, when did we do that? When, when did we not do that? And he said, when you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. In other words, it's seeing that Christ in the other people and doing it there. But, but you didn't do it, and it's really clear on the righteous side, they did it, but they didn't do it to get a reward. They didn't do it to get a reward. They just did it because that's who they were. Who are you? Who are you? I mean, when it comes out, who you are is really seen by the way you interact with the other people that are around you. Who are you? You know? I got a feeling for me, 
my, my chili recipe for me is sometimes I'm righteous, but sometimes I'm not so righteous. I hope God can make up the difference with, you know, a little bit of extra sauce in the chili that I am. And that extra sauce is grace, of course. Amen. So how do you get there? How do you become what you're called to be? You know, this process actually is all about transformation. That's what this scripture to me is, full transformation. Which is what I really believe, you know, is what we're put on this earth for. Is that we're born into this earth, we're called into this earth, we put the image of God within us, and we walk through to be transformed from a little bit less what we are right now, turned into a little bit more what we ought to be. And that's what the Christian faith is all about. It means you kind of learn to grow into your godness. But I wonder how many of us really focus on living into our godness instead of just trying to get the scales even. But not break the Ten Commandments because we don't want to screw up. You see, we got to truly not try and think our way into right acting. We got to act our way into right thinking. And that's the process that we are to allow us to become transformed. It's not always easy. Sometimes it's really difficult. You know, I had, I'll be up front with you. I had a, an older brother who, let's just put it this way, my brother and I are like night and day. I hate to tell you who's more like night and who's more like day. But, but, I mean, we were just totally different. And growing up, I'll never forget, it was really difficult because he just wasn't like me. We didn't, we didn't get along that well. I don't know that we get along that great right now. But the truth of the matter is, I'll never forget my dad always telling me, he always made me memorize the psalm that we had today. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lads. But he'd always emphasize the second verse. Know this. It's he himself who is God. It's he who made us and not we ourselves. I still remember his voice telling me, you know what? You didn't make you. But you know what? You got a lot of influence on you. Use it so that you turn into what you're supposed to be. To do that, you act your way into right thinking. That's how the transformation of the mind goes, I think. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. But if you sit back and say, I'm just relying on the Holy Spirit to transform my mind, well, you know what? Odds are I probably won't get there. Because you've got to work your way into it. You've got to get your body connected to your spirit and act your way into right thinking. And a lot of us, you know what? This is the way I've always thought. This is the way I want to think. You know what? Nobody really knows what I'm thinking, so it's even better. You know, I can think whatever I want. Have a big smile on my face. Masks have really messed that up. You know, you used to be able to have a big smile on your face thinking, yeah, oh yeah, oh it's okay. I'm going to kill you in your head. But yeah, it's okay. Oh, it's, everything's great. But the truth of the matter is, is that we've got to act our way in right thinking. It's not so much what you say only. It's who you are. It's character. And you know what? I really believe this world is really hurting for lack of character. You know, there's, over the years that I've been here, there's been one person that, in my mind, fulfilled this scripture and fulfilled, you know, sort of that process of really being real more than anybody else. Some of you know her. She died back in 2012. Her name was Ann Norwood. Ann Norwood was an, a woman who, to be honest with you, she never married. She, uh, earlier in her life, she felt called to becoming a nun, so she went out and practiced being a nun, but, you know, and I don't, and I don't think you're going to care. You know, um, it, it, you know, she sort of fell in love with this guy, and then so she left being a nun. She worked in the inner city, in, in, you know, the combat zone in, in Boston for a long time. She was in that area, and uh, she ended up going off getting a Ph.D. Brilliant woman. 
She was a therapist. And I'll never forget being with her, you know, as she went through life. She was a senior warden for me at, at this church right in the beginning. But she always was real. And she'd look at me, even when I was thinking stuff like, I really want to do something really like crazy. She goes, go ahead, do it. But you better come back real quick. I'll never forget as she died, because I was with her when she died. And she had uh, ovarian cancer. It was diagnosed very late. It was actually back in, in uh, I said she died in 12. She died in 14. I apologize for that. Because it was 14, I had my knee. I just had my knee replaced. And I wasn't even supposed to go out, but I wanted to be with her. And the whole nine yards of being with her. And I'll never forget sitting with her. And while she was somewhat in the process of dying, and if you've ever been with somebody that's dying, it's really an experience, it's an adventure. And I remember she was talking about stuff and it didn't make sense to a lot of the other folks that were standing there. Kind of made sense to me because I knew everything about her. And when she got done talking about I heard her say one time, she said, well, I'm not taking that with me. No, I'm not going to take that with me. And I said to her after she kind of came back into full consciousness, I said, what are you doing? And she looked at me and she said, well, I kind of went over to the other side for a little while. And I realized what I didn't want to drag into it, so I'm getting rid of that stuff. And bit by bit, even in the process of just really days before she died, she was unpacking the resentments. She was unpacking those things that put us at disdain with each other. She was unloading all the stuff that sometimes we say, oh yeah, we dealt with it, but we really didn't deal with it at all. The day she died was uh, actually a really kind of beautiful thing. Her face kind of just lighted, lit up. You know what I mean? If you've been in that position before, it was just shining. And I thought for myself, she's finally gotten full transformation. Amen. And it wasn't because of the dying of her body. It was because she died to herself. When the Son of Man comes and sits on his glory, so he separates the righteous from the unrighteous. Are you going to be more on the side of the righteous or more on the side of the unrighteous? Are you going to look at things and say, well, I, I got by, I got by, I smiled the whole time. Meanwhile, I was saying, I'm going to kill him. Or did you really sort of let go of that? Did you get to a place where you're not doing it to get a reward or to get an entrance into something, but just simply because it's the next right thing? The only way you get there is by acting your way into right thinking. By allowing the grace of God, the spirit of God to transform you from a little bit less of what you are right now and turn into a little bit more of what you want to be. As you come to the Eucharist this day, I pray that you come as I'm going to come. Saying I'm not there yet. I got a long way to go. But through God's grace, I'm going to get there. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray.